In the last video, I promised you an add-on module that would allow us to have 30 volts and 10 amps of switching power when we wanted it, or with the add-on to have up to 12 volts and up to 2.2 amps of linear power. At the heart of this is this particular board, fairly easy to find online. So let's have a closer look at what's inside of here. LM317 voltage regulator, the heat sink all the supporting capacitors and resistors, the potentiometer, all soldered on the board, $1. Another dollar for shipping. It doesn't come with a plastic knob. That's a standard six millimeter shaft. You need to supply your own. They did make a mistake here on the output where they got the wires crossed. The red is on the negative and the black is on the positive. I thought it best not to mess with the connector and just to keep that in mind when the soldering came along. I really like this style of banana plugs and they make a very positive connection and they're the only style I ever use. These diameters are 3 16 of an inch and that's the size of drill I use in the project box to secure them. The input wires off that board are very small so I soldered them to some 14 gauge copper wire and that's what these set screws are biting on. These small voltmeter modules are easily found online. They're about $2 a piece. They have a small quirk in that uh, they only uh, start to work above 3 volts. Not really a problem on this project. The voltages that we'd be typically using are above that 3 volt threshold. 3.3, 3, 4.5, 5, 6, 7.5, 9, and 12. These banana jacks are also easy to find online. Scrape these uh, blades very well before you solder. And you'll notice that it's very tight to fit everything here. So I'll give you a few dimensions. That gives you an idea of the center line of the components. The center line of these banana plugs are 2 and 3 eighths of an inch for my bench power supply. That might vary according to yours. These banana plugs come up against the shoulder so that they can't pull out. But um, we're going to have to secure them to make sure that they can't be pushed in. The surface was roughed up and uh, a generous amount of hot glue was put on. Those banana plugs are very secure now. On testing, it was found that this thing needed more capacitance. I added these two 100 picofarads 50 volt electrolytic. One here on the input pins, one out here on the output pins. This LM317 board was intended to have a constant 12 volt input and then the desired output would be adjusted through the use of the potentiometer. The more gap there is between the input and output, the more heat the LM317 generates and that this heat sink has to dissipate. We have the luxury of being able to adjust the input voltage. Therefore, by leaving the potentiometer cranked all the way up and by adjusting our desired output through the bench power supply, we minimize that gap. It's usually about, you know, one and a half volt difference between the two. And this is the most efficient way to use this unit and will generate the least amount of heat. We're going to first establish a benchmark by putting 100 ohms across the output of the switching power supply without the linear module attached. And then we're going to place the same 100 ohm resistance across the output of the linear module. We're going to be using the Loto OSC 2002 for these tests and the very same settings for the linear power supply and for the switching power supply will be used. We're starting off with the switching mode power supply, 3.3 volts across a 100 ohm resistor. 
the method of measurement here using AC coupling and the uh, smallest uh, volt setting on the oscilloscope um, was recommended to me uh, by people that know far more than I. The choice of 10 uh, microsecond as a time division uh, was mine. It produces the best uh, waveform as we see on the screen presently. The 100 million samples per second was chosen by the Loto software with the settings that uh, were done here. I want to point your attention to the peak-to-peak -peak value that I've circled here at the bottom of the screen. I'll pause the device here. So I've got 51 millivolts here. Start again. 52 millivolts. Start again. 49 millivolts. So let's call it 50 millivolts for the switching mode power supply at 3.3 volts. Now with the LM317 linear module, same 3.3 volt across 100 ohm resistor, same settings on the LOTO oscilloscope software. We'll pause it. At the bottom, peak to peak, I'm getting 27 millivolts. Pause it again. 28 millivolts. We'll pause that again. 24 millivolts. Let's call it 25. First, let's square away these numbers with the ones that were taken in the last video for the bench power supply. If we change anything in our methods, you know, going from DC to uh, AC coupled, going from uh, a different uh, sample rate, uh, a different oscilloscope, uh, even uh, different cables, even the orientation of the uh, power supply or the orientation of the oscilloscope. Um, any change any variable and uh, the absolute value will uh, be affected but that's different to relative numbers which is uh, we were using the very same settings for the switching power supply as we were using for the LM317 linear module so I would think that the relative uh, values that we obtained are uh, meaningful. Now the LM317 module is actually uh, much quieter than uh, what we measured. There is some pass-through that's going on from the powering through here with the bench power supply that you don't get if you try to power it with a 9 volt battery. You get 15 millivolts of noise off the LM317 317 if you just use this battery. So that's all I got guys. Hammer that uh, like button. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll talk to you guys soon.